Welcome to my profile over this amazingly colored tetra. This is one of my favorite species of tetra in the hobby. This is because of both their small size and bright and vibrant color. As you can see, their body will reflect a blue purple color and their fins will show a bright red color, which gives amazing contrast. The species seen above is the blueberry tetra or HYD. The maximum standard length for this species is only 1.3 inches or 3.5 centimeters. And the minimum aquarium size I'd recommend for keeping this species is a 20 gallon, with a school of 6 minimum with larger being better. For diminutive species such as this, I typically recommend schools of 10 or more. This will make them significantly less shy and skittish in their environment. The ideal time to range for this species is not known for sure, but based on their habitat, the typical tropical aquarium temperature or the subtropical aquarium temperature, which is slightly lower than what most people keep it as. The reason for this is because their habitat is clear water stream, with their water flowing at a moderate to rapid rate. In addition to that, their environment is surrounded by riparian vegetation, which is vegetation that grows out of the water. These are mainly herbs and bushes, and the substrate for these streams are typically sand. Because of the rapid movement of the water, the clear water stream, and the riparian vegetation, it is very likely that this is a high oxygen environment, just like hill stream environments. While this isn't definitive, based on their natural habitat, it is likely, and for that reason I do recommend high oxygen aquariums for this species, at least until further data comes out regarding it. Their native distribution is the Rio River, seen above, and this stream is located in Brazil. To create a setup ideal for this species, I do recommend a heavily planted setup with low to medium light and high surface movement. Then use sand or aqua soil as your substrate. The high surface movement and heavy planting density will ensure proper oxygenation. In addition to that, I do recommend keeping them in groups of at least 10. Small scooting fish species tend to be very shy and skittish when not kept in large enough groups. Now the diet for this species is a mixed one, with a combination of filamentous algae, organic debris, and insect larvae, as well as adult insect fragments and unidentified arthropods. To replicate this diet in captivity, be sure to feed veggie flakes like the Omega-1 brand. This will be their stable diet, and then supplement with live and frozen meaty food. Some options for live foods would be grindle worms, copepods, and amphipods as culture options. Then frozen food options would be baby brine shrimp and daphnia. Using a mixture of all of these options will be a good way to introduce a variety of protein sources for your fish and prevent nutrient issues long term. The behavior for this species should be similar to other small schooling fish species, with just their schooling behavior seen and the occasional bickering between males for the attention of females. But otherwise, it should be a peaceful aquarium. This species is compatible with most peaceful species of fish. Some, but not all, of the options include Small tetras, small rasboras, mountain minnows, quarry catfish, coolie loaches, hillstream loaches, and more. And that has been the care guide over the blueberry tetra or HYD. Let's quickly go over the most important care tips for this species since I did throw a lot at you. First, they are a small scooting species and require groups of at least 6 with 10 being better for them. Two, they are a hillstream species and require high oxygenation through surface movement and live plants to thrive in your care. Just like hillstream loaches, they will show worse longevity if kept in low oxygen environment. 3. Keep your tank temperature at 78 degrees or slightly below 78 degrees. This is because warmer water can hold less oxygen compared to colder water. This will allow for better oxygenation in your aquarium. Now let's go over the source of all of this information. Using the source above, I was able to find all the information used in this video. So if you want to look at the source material, just type this title into Google Scholar and it will pop right up for you. It's from 2016, by the way. And make sure to subscribe to this channel for next week's video on the African Tetra family, Alestidae.